we are having a super early spring here in Wisconsin. And I'm heading out today with my apprentice, Brett, who you may have met in the ice breakthrough video. We're gonna do some botanizing. And something that I feel is always missing in field guides is, you know, typically you see the mature form of the plant. So you'll see the plant, maybe it's flowers, um, leaves, but what do those plants look like, for instance, in the winter? There's all these winter stalks. And my plan is to do some ID videos on winter stalks, but also this right now on the springtime forms of these plants. So seeing um, a few different species today in their very first little incarnation in the spring. And learning to recognize these little teeny things lets us know that in that area, later on, we can come and find the mature plants. And um, in some of the cases today, with some of these spring ephemerals is what they're called, these are plants that come up in the spring and then they die back and you usually don't see them anymore for the rest of the year, is that they have some choice edible parts. So learning to recognize them when they're very, very young allows you to uh, take those, you know, harvest some of those edible parts when they're at their prime and most full of sugars. Okay, just move some of the leaves back to reveal spring beauty. And we've got some really tiny examples here. We're looking for these little white threads almost. And at the end, they get a little bit of a reddish green tinge to them. Over here is a more mature one. And you can start to see the leaves developing. Here's an even more mature one. Coming up and you've got a nice stalk. And you've got a couple leaves and those are the flower buds. And down here is a creature of the woodlands that is appearing to us because we're exploring. And right through there, Brett just found this for us. The whole range. These ones are pretty mature at this point. Tiny, tiny little ones. These are the very first ones. There's one right there. There it is. And once you clean off the dirt, you can eat the spud and the leaves and everything. Oh, here's an example of the very first, very first little teeny one coming up. Right there, that purple thing. Really interesting and because it's a woodland mint and boy, I feel like perhaps one of the most delicious mints yeah. out there. At least in the wild. And an interesting thing is that it seems to be an evergreen, perhaps? I mean, we're finding, we're finding this coming up, I mean, much too early well. to have this amount of growth, perhaps? So it might be under the snow? I'm not sure on that completely, but we have the winter stalks here, too which is interesting. And like all mints, it's going to have a square stem. Sometimes you can feel that better than you can see it, but you can pretty much, you can see it here. And it's really hairy. And then you taste one of those leaves and you have a fabulous mint. 
Here's the winter stock, the leek. Those distinctive little black beads. And this is the really young plant. It's got the range of... This one really has the green. Some of these a little bit more purpley. And so we're going to grow in a little colony like this. You see one there, one there. Of course, you can easily identify these by their scent. Because they have that garlic onion smell. I also like, you can feel these. You know, they're almost rubbery and strong. So you can just, this is one you could find blind. When I was trying to find the trout lilies, I was noticing that where there are a lot of these like really tough and stuck in the ground little twigs sticking up. These are all little baby maples. Um, and I don't think the trout lilies are going to be growing near here because these things, you know, they have these wide broad leaves that block a lot of the sunlight. And so I think the trout lilies tend to prefer more to run this side away from all the baby maples. Too much competition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they're just so abundant right through here that nothing really else can grow. That's why you don't see any leek stalks or anything like that either. Yeah, you're right. There's nothing else under there. Okay, so what do we have here? These are trout lilies. The very, very early sprouts. And if you want to get... So they have a little bulb under here. And the optimal time to get them is before you can find them very easily. So you have to know what you're looking for, but they have these little yellow to purple stalks. And then underneath here, you have this little bulb. And it's very sweet. Yeah, Mirabelle was saying it's like, what did you call them? Candy. Candy. Yeah, lollipops. Yeah, yeah. What is lollipops? Okay, so we have another so, one over here. here. And then there's one more. But yeah, these are prime whenever they're the hardest to find, unfortunately. But if you know what you're looking for and you, if you know, if you start to see them later in the season, you can sort of mark the areas and make note of where they are. And then you come back at this time of year and you'll start to see these little tiny sprouts. And then if you dig up those bulbs, they're pretty delicious. And the whole thing is edible. You can eat the roots, the stem, the leaves. You just kind of... And usually, we're not finding a lot of them around here, but usually they're, they're in these huge groups. And whenever they start to flower and the leaves start coming up, you'll really see lots of them. And it's funny, you, you come out here and you see something like this and you don't think that you'll be able to recognize it, but when you really pay attention, they're actually really obvious and you can start to spot them and distinguish them from things that look sort of similar. And it's, you know, it's kind of a cool feeling to be able to just glance at something like this and know exactly what's underneath there. <laughs> I love that there's always mysteries you come by too. This is a, a fungus, a mushroom of some kind. And I'm not quite sure if it has just come up this early in the spring or if it somehow held on through the winter. Really cool creature. The ground bean doesn't have any leaves or anything coming up yet, but it's very recognizable by its winter stock. So you've got these little vines that twirl all over everything. These are not its leaves. You can see it's winding up around this stem. It's winding up around this old dead stick. And once you start seeing it, it's everywhere. If it's in your locale, it can look like grass, but you can start to tell the difference between the grasses or uh, this is sedge, actually, and 
a little round twining ground bean. So Brett is up here and he has already dug some up. You can see these are decent sized beans and he's been just working in this this pile and how you cooked these up the other day right yeah i mean it took me a while to gather enough to make a small dish out of you know it's just a side dish but yeah they're uh they're pretty tasty they i think they kind of taste like cooked egg yolks <laughs> um, not in a bad way but you know they kind of have that texture and a little bit of the flavor um but they're pretty good and you know they're a little difficult to get in quantity but they're a good protein source out in the woods if you can't find anything else or if you don't have any hunting ability or trapping. But yeah, they've got this little thin skin on them if you peel them off there. Sometimes they can be purple and spotted. Um, so if you see something like that, don't be worried that you found the wrong thing. They can be kind of creamy colored. Actually, this one's got a little bit of purple to it and you can sort of get a, a hint of the coloring and you just dig around underneath the vines and yeah you just you find where the vines are and you just start churning the ground and it takes a while to get the hang of finding them here's another one right here um, they're uh, just kind of in this pile of dirt and once you get used to finding them you'll start to recognize them a little quickly like here's another one you can just kind of see them this one looks this is a perfect example of the purple spotting so you can see Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. So, so sometimes you'll see them kind of like that. Wow. So we've been sitting here for less than five minutes, and I've got five beans. That's a bean a minute, maybe, or you know, maybe a little faster. But yeah. And so. But sometimes I'll dig for five minutes and not find anything. But sometimes I'll find a bunch right in a row. So it's kind of random. Like I said, when you get the hang of it, you can start to notice them a little easier and it gets easier to find them. And these are fresh beans, so you don't have to soak them overnight and cook them for ever and ever. You just right. boiled it up a little bit. And... Yeah, I just put it in some boiling water with a little bit of salt. And uh, then I added a little more salt whenever I drain the water. And, and you then, can eat it raw just, too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, they're really good. I snack on them occasionally. Yeah, they're like really crunchy and they don't have that, like they don't have the egg yolk flavor or texture if you're eating them raw. Um, you have to cook them to get that, but they kind of have a little bit of a sweetness to them too. Not bad. Sometimes when you're looking around under the leaves, you're gonna find toothwort. And you see these little teeny roots. And they sort of just sit on the surface. They're attached by tiny little threads. And some people feel these have a really strong horseradish flavor. Others feel they have a turpentine flavor. They don't like them at all. But the leaves, when they come up, they are, they have a nice flavor, I think. I don't really like the roots, but the leaves have kind of a horseradishy flavor that is really good on a sandwich or in a salad. I mean, just kind of litter on the surface and look like little bananas or something. Okay, here's a great example of a really, really young form here of stinging nettle. And stinging nettle, of course, is a great edible. And we're seeing it in a couple different stages of growth here. There's that purple color to it often. And a little teeny kind of pink purple bud coming out. And these guys tend to, when they do start to come up, they come up very quickly with their friends. So unless you're really out early, you're gonna find a couple that are in their more mature forms and those will be easier to recognize because they have the, you know, kind of the, the leaf form that they're going to have in their more mature stage already. And you can already see 
on these nettles, the little spikes that later on are going to have the, you know, the poison in them that gives you the sting. And the long ridged stems. This is ostrich fern, which is a really great wild edible. And this is the winter stalks that we would see. And if we look down here, there it is. These are the beginning of the fiddleheads. If I pull some of this back, you can see the curled up form. They're really tight right now. And this is a good example of one that doesn't have any of the winter stalks, but you can see the broken off stalks there. And sometimes it'll have the stalks up, other times, like with this one, the stalks are falling down. You might not notice them in the under in the undergrowth. So once they fall down and get buried, much tougher to see. But these are very distinctive and Boy, when they're up about this high, they're starting to get prime. In the winter stalks, we're looking for, somebody felt that this looked like an ostrich feather. And then that nice indent furrow that runs up along the stalk. Thanks for watching and share anything you like in the comments regarding these plants, your experiences with these plants, if you've tried them before, if you're excited about trying them. All right, we'll see you soon.